everyone, this is Brittany Washburn. Today I want to tell you about a programming unit that I did with fourth and fifth graders the last few years. So if you've never been to my class website, it is k5elementarytechnology.weebly.com. You can find this unit under fourth grade or fifth grade over on the side, and it is our Fridays project. I love loved our schedule the last couple years on Fridays I got to see every class for the entire quarter because we had four of each grade level um, instead of five and we had too many specialists but anyway uh, this is the project that we did and we were able to do it for most of the groups fit in eight weeks because uh, things always happen on Fridays uh, to pull them away from specials but we learned how to do scratch computer programming by going through a workbook and using the Scratch website to be able to make some really, really cool stuff. And I attached the Common Core Standards and the ISTE nets to it in case you want to see that if you need to prove to your administrators how valuable this is. It was really fun. Okay, so the very first time that I had my students do this, they had to download the file. And we'll let that download and I'm going to show you if you click on this picture over here it brings you to the scratch project editor so this is where they go to work on it I told my students that they could make an account at home if their parents said yes but I did not let them make an account during my class time because I just didn't want to deal with um, getting all the permission slips and that kind of thing but any of them that came back in with a sign in already I did let save their stuff and you know you get a few extra perks so this is the editor and let me open up our document this workbook as it's opening <laughs> I did not come up with myself it is something that I found online written by Jeremy Scott and it is awesome it's a free resource online so I grabbed it so it talks the student through at first how to do the lessons and the first day that I did it I talked about what these different icons mean like anytime that you have this little video icon that means that there's a YouTube video that goes with it to show you how to do the lesson anytime you see this little guy with a smiley face and the light bulb pay attention because that's really important information and anytime that my students got stuck on something I said go back into your workbook find the little guy with a smiley face in the light bulb and read it because chances are that's the part that you're missing so each one of the tasks has a screencast that goes with it it shows them what to do and then the students basically just reproduce it so there are several tasks within a lesson and extension activities we never had time for the extensions which was kind of a bummer but what I wanted to show you is that there are guiding questions for every lesson. So I required my students with the last 10 minutes of class, I would set a timer to come and make sure that they had answers to these. Some classes were better than others. Some I did not have to give a hard time about answering the questions. Others like didn't want to, so I had to come up with some incentives, which was a little bit of a pain. But I required them to work through answering these questions, everything except the extension questions, because it proved that they were learning as they were going. Like, for example, this one, what, what mistake has the programmer made? So it's higher order thinking, it's looking at um, what they have been learning and analyzing it. I loved it. So that all of those pages, there were nine pages just to get through lesson one. So you can see how they might not get through a whole lesson in one week because it really is a lot of work but most of my students within the eight weeks got through three or four lessons and they really really loved it so i highly recommend coming to my website so that you can do this with your students too and you are absolutely welcome to link to this page i don't plan on changing any of it anytime soon so it'll all be there just like you're you're planning one thing that I do want to forewarn you, my students would come back and download this again, not realizing that it's going to be the blank one and not have their hard saved work in there. So just guide them to um, retrieve it from their My Documents or their desktop, whatever your protocol is at your school. After the first time that they download it, then they need to retrieve it so that their stuff is saved and make sure that they save it every time. 
Okay, thanks for watching. That's how I did Scratch with my fourth and fifth graders.